Hi, this is Tony Gondola from the New Mexico Museum of Space History in Alamogordo. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the next production in our virtual Rocketeer Academy series. Enjoy! Invented sometime in the late 1500s, optical telescopes have steadily improved over the centuries. From exoplanets to black holes, today's instruments have unlocked the secrets of the universe in ways that would have been unimaginable to those who first noticed that lenses can make distant objects appear as they are near. Let's take a closer look at how they actually work. All optical telescopes function on the principle of bending light. Refracting telescopes do this by using lenses to refract the light. Reflecting telescopes use mirrors. In all cases, the parallel light rays of a distant object are gathered and bent to converge and form an image. Unless it's focused onto the sensor in a digital camera or some other detector, this prime focus image is bright but very small and needs to be magnified for visual use. This is where a secondary set of optics comes in, the eyepiece. Think of the eyepiece or ocular as a small but powerful magnifier that brings a close-up view of the prime focus image to the eye. Depending on the magnifying power of the eyepiece, different powers of magnification can be obtained. Now you may think that magnification of distant objects is the most significant thing a telescope can do. While it's important, the brightness of the image and its resolution are sometimes more important. In order for that to make sense, you have to understand the effects of the diameter of the lens or mirror on performance. As telescope diameter or aperture increases, so does its light gathering power and resolution. Think of it as a bucket that's catching photons rather than water. A telescope with a 12 inch aperture generates a prime focus image that's four times brighter and twice as sharp as that formed by a six inch aperture telescope. It's the inverse square law and the wave nature of light at play here. That's the reason professional, as well as some amateur astronomers, are always building larger and larger telescopes. They do this to gather more light and see greater detail. In fact, there really isn't any limit on this. If it was possible to build a telescope in space with a mirror miles across, it would be possible to image far-off exoplanets with a resolution similar to that that weather satellites provide for the Earth today. Of course, that's far beyond present capabilities, but it's really just a matter of engineering, not physics. For the most part, professional astronomers really aren't looking to make pretty pictures, but rather to extract every bit of information contained in the light from far-off objects. By using an instrument called a spectrograph, astronomers can tease out all kinds of information about an object, including its temperature, motion, strength of magnetic fields, and even what it's made of. For this kind of work, the more light you have to work with, the better, especially for very faint, far-off objects, thus the need for larger apertures. Another factor is the atmosphere. Any ground-based telescope is greatly affected by it. The light from distant objects is disturbed as it passes through it. The end result at the telescope is an image that's constantly moving and blurring. This effect is called seeing and is the reason why large professional telescopes are often placed on far off mountain peaks and dry deserts. This is done to beat the seeing as much as possible. Of course, the best location is in space, which totally eliminates any concerns about atmospheric effects. This is why the results from the relatively small Hubble Space Telescope are so good. Through the simple bending of light, the telescope has opened up the universe to understanding. From galaxies formed at the very beginning of the universe to a child's first backyard view of the moon, this simple instrument continues to inform and inspire. One can only imagine what wonders are still to be revealed. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our latest production in our virtual Rocketeer Academy. Be sure to check back at this location for new productions and updates. And for now, stay home, stay safe, stay curious. <laughs>